Who hasn't experienced this? Months or years ago, you were skimping, were too cheap and bought a low capacity SSD for your system, and now the SSD in question is almost full. An upgrade would be nice now. The new SSD is already waiting to be used. But doesn't that mean you have to install the SSD into the device and then reinstall Windows, including programs and games? No, not at all. Today we are talking about how you can upgrade your existing SSD to a bigger one with a higher capacity without having to reinstall Windows or anything else for that matter. In today's video, I'll show you a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to perform a clean and effective clone job. Almost anyone can do this type of clone. We'll be using the popular software Ease Us Disk Copy to get the job done. I'll put the link to it down below in the video description for you. I would like to point out though that this video is sponsored by Ease Us. There are of course quite a few alternatives out there, some free, others paid software. But today we are going to talk about cloning that is pretty beginner friendly, hence the choice Ease Us. Today's test and demo object is a mini PC. But what I'm about to show you today also applies to laptops and regular desktop PCs. The mini PC has a very small 256 GB SSD inside it. In fact, I had to make a few compromises with that capacity and therefore had to leave out a few large programs and games. Step 1. Let's head to the EaseUS website and download ourselves the disk copy software. For our cloning project today, we need the Pro Edition. There are of course other editions to choose from, but these are aimed at pros and companies. We can also choose between three license plans, a monthly or yearly subscription model, which luckily can be cancelled anytime, or a lifetime license. Needless to say, your opinions will differ quite a bit on how much that type of software is worth to you. Step 2. We run the downloaded file and watch the installation of the disk copy software do its thing. After launching the tool, we are being displayed the three license plans. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my pro license key in the field below. We need the pro version today. Now this piece of software is fully unlocked. Here we can copy or rather clone entire drives or clone very specific individual partitions. You could also make use of a few other features such as creating a bootable USB flash drive for cloning. Step 3. Go grab an external hard drive, SSD or NVMe enclosure, hub or docking station, whatever you may want to call it at the end of the day, install your new, bigger SSD in it and connect the SSD to your device in which the old, too small SSD you wish to clone is located. Step 4. Disk copy automatically detects that a new SSD has been connected and prompts us whether we want to update the drive information within the tool or not. We are going to click on update. A few seconds later, we are asked if we want to migrate our operating system to the newly connected SSD. That's exactly what we have planned for today. We say yes to that. At the top in blue, our current 256GB SSD with Windows and its partitions listed. Below, in green, our new target drive, the new 1TB SSD. We could set and go for user-defined disk layouts here, decide on how big certain partitions should be, how much of it should actually be formatted, and so on. I recommend leaving everything at default settings, basically out of it. Step 5. Proceed with cloning. This may take a few minutes. Mainly it depends on how big your current SSD is, how fast it is, how much data needs to be moved, how fast the new SSD is, and finally, how fast your USB connection actually is. Fast forward, and just before the cloning process completes, we are asked an important question. Namely, whether we want to boot from USB from now on, or whether the SSD is going to be installed internally and serves as an upgrade. We do not want USB boot in this case, so we select no. As a matter of fact, we are practically as good as done. We can now turn off our device, in my case the mini PC, and unplug it from the power outlet. Step 6. Now we disconnect the externally connected SSD from the device, remove the SSD from the hub or enclosure, and then unplug all cables from the device because we now need to get to the inside of it to replace the old SSD with the new one. 
depending on the device, it's likely that the SSD comes with a heatsink or thermal pad. Both usually need to be removed from the old SSD, since we plan on reusing them for our new SSD. Now it's time to loosen the screw, pull out the SSD, and install the new SSD instead. In the end, don't forget to put the thermal pad and or SSD heatsink back on. Finally, close the device all up again. Step 7. Connect to power again and plug in your peripherals. And finally boot up the device. If everything went well and as planned, Windows should boot up normally as if nothing ever happened without any data loss. And obviously, it went perfectly. As you saw yourselves, it's a really quick and straightforward process, fairly easy to perform. The new 1TB SSD is now running inside this device, and there was actually only very little work to do to get this working. There was no need to reinstall Windows, programs, games and the like. ESA's disk copy might not exactly be free if you want to perform a Windows clone, but it offers a smooth, user-friendly clone, especially for novices and newbies who aren't quite familiar with this subject matter. So believe it or not, anyone can do this. I'll put the link to the disk copy tool in the video description. Have you ever upgraded your SSD because there simply wasn't enough storage space left? Do you usually go for a fresh installation or do you prefer going for clones too? If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, I'd greatly appreciate you leaving me a like, but go ahead, hit that dislike button instead if you feel like it. With that in mind, thank you all for watching and until the next one.